Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the XR Club and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to look at a bit of DAX and conditional statements. We're going to look at the AND statement, we're going to look at the OR statement and you're going to be introduced to the IN statement. Now, if you're familiar with AND and OR from Excel, when you're in Power BI or Power Pivot, using DAX basically, these functions work different and have a little limitation compared to that in Excel. So I'm going to show you some syntax so you can work around that. As for the in statement, well, that is not found in Excel. So for Excel users, this might be very new to you. But before we get stuck into the video, please do hang on till the end of the video because there's a workbook for you to download, an activity for you to complete so you can practice what I showed you here in this video. But I'll leave details to that till the end of the video. So do make sure that you stay tuned. So let's have a look at our data. We've got three records, and this is very simple data that I have set up for the purpose of showing you the likes of the AND statement, the OR statement, and the IN statement. And we're gonna create some conditional columns to look at these functions in use. So we're gonna start with the AND statement, and the AND statement, as we can see, takes two logical tests. Both logical tests must be met in order to get a true result, just like in Excel. So if one gives you a false result, your overall result will be false. Let's do a logical test. Let's see if in our table, our table one record equals to our table two record. So that's our first logical test. And then let's see if our table two record equals our table three record. Now we've got two logical tests in there. If we hit enter, we will get a series of true or falses, depending on whether record, record one equals record two and record two equals record three. In this case, the only one that's true is the bottom one here. Let's say we wanted to add on another condition and we see when I put in the comma there, we got a red line straight away. But I'll continue on and I'll say if record three equals our record one and close the bracket. Now, when we hit enter, we see that we get this error and the error says too many arguments were passed to the AND function. When you're using DAX, only two arguments can be passed, not three. And this is where you need to know some DAX syntax. So I'm gonna delete off that last statement and I am going to add on another new column. And in this column, I am going to call this column and syntax. What we're going to test in this is the exact same test, but when you're using the AND syntax, you don't use the AND statement. You need to have some syntax. So we can start with our table one record, and that we are asking is that equal to our table two record. That's our first logical test. Now to combine this, you use the double ampersand. The double ampersand stands for AND. Shift and enter to move down a row and I've got table record two equals table record three. And again, double ampersand. Now note how I don't put in a comma at the end there. I've just put in the double ampersand. Now I'm gonna say if record table three equals record table one, and that's the end of our AND statement. We can close that there without the need of brackets without the need of using and, and we can have an additional criteria. So when you need more than two, you don't use the and function, you use the and syntax. Let's move on now and quickly look at the or statement. Now with the or statement, only one condition needs to be met to get a true result. So we can start with the OR statement and it looks for a logical test one. So we're going to use the same, see if our table record one equals our table record two. So that's our first logical test. And then our table two equals our table three and that should say equals, not comma, equals table three. Now we've got our two conditional statements in. But just like the AND statement, if we go to put in a third conditional statement, we are getting an error. Now, when we click on the red line, you'll see the unexpected error. You'll see unexpected parameter table record three. So it's not expecting this. 
Why is it not expecting this? Because the OR function only takes two statements. So we need to delete off that last one. I didn't delete it, I pressed enter. Delete off that last one and close the bracket and now we have our OR statement. But what if we wanted to add three? Well then we need to know the syntax. The syntax for OR is very simple, just like the syntax for AND. But instead of using double ampersand, we use the double pipe. We don't start with the OR statement either. We start with the table. So is table record one equals table record two? That is our first logical test. Now we're going to say OR and it's double pipe. And double pipe is found on the backslash button. So then we're going to say is table two equal to table three. And then we are going to add in another OR statement. And we're going to say is table three equal to table one. Now we don't add in another OR because we're not adding in another condition. We don't close with a bracket and we don't put in a comma. We can just hit enter. And now that we've hit enter, we can see all of the results are true because in some cases, record one equals record two. In other cases, record two equals record three. And in other cases, record three equals record one. So that's the and and the or statement. Now, I've gone through this fairly fast. So if you're confused at all, do hop over to the article on my website and have a read a little bit more about it. Finally, what we're going to look at now is the in function. And the in function can be used sometimes instead of the or function or in addition to the or function. But what the in function will do to, is test and see the values you stipulate in the in, are they contained within an expression or a column or whatever it is that you select. Let's add a new column and let's have a quick look at the in statement. So we are going to, first of all, we're going to start with the record. So we're going to say record one, in record one, does it contain 25 or let's say 87? And we will close our in statement with curly brackets. It's very important to note they're not standard brackets, they're curly brackets. They're listing an array, a list of stuff, and you're checking this list to see if it's contained within record one. Now we know record one has a 25 and a 25 and it also then has a 31. So what are you expecting to be returned here? You're expecting a true, a true and a false, which is what we have achieved. Now we could add onto this, we can combine this with ORs and we can combine it with ANDs. Or we could add in other values. This list doesn't have to be only two values long. You could say, is it equal to all, does it also contain 67? Now record one doesn't contain any 67s, but it does contain a, the 225s and the 31. If we change this to record two, now, record two, we have a 25, we have a 67, and we have a 31. So again, we would expect a true, a true, and a false. And we'll see here, we get a true, a true, and a false. Because it's found the 25, it's found a 67, and then the last one, it hasn't found any of them. So basically, what in will do is, first of all, you take your expression, or in this case, a column, we're checking a column, and we're looking to see within that, are any of these values in that? And if they are, you get a true, and if they are not, you get a false. Let's have a look at another example here. We could say, and table record one has to contain 25, 87, or 67. So what results do you think you'll get here? Well, table two has 25 in the first row and it has 25 in the first row of record one. So we should get a true here. In record two, we have a 25 and we have a 67. We should also get a true here. And then in the third record, we have a 31 and a 31. We don't have a 25 or an 87 or a 67. So we should get a false because we've used the AND statement. So when you're working with condition, conditional statements, you can use, you can mix in with ANDs, you can mix in with ORs, 
But basically the in is you're listing values and you're checking to see are they contained within whatever it is that you have mentioned, whether it be an expression or as we mentioned here, an actual column. Now I did say at the start of this video to stay tuned because I have a activity for you to complete. And if you hop over to my website, which you'll find a link below the video, you will find a file to download. Now in that file, we have a very simple sales table. And this sales table lists invoices. It also lists products, customers, and the units sold. So what are the tests that I have for you to complete? Well, first of all, when you open the file, what we wanna do is create a calculated column. Now this calculated column is going to classify based on the quantity and the product. So we have large shipments and we have standard shipments. And here's the classifications. So if you have greater than 45 units sold of scooters, if you have greater than 25 units sold of dolls houses or of skateboards, or if you have 20 units of bikes sold on one order, then these are all going to be large shipments. Other than that, they are going to be standard shipments. Now using the and, using the or, using the in, I want you to create a conditional column. You'll also have to combine it with an if statement to classify the invoices based on whether they're a large shipment or whether they are a small shipment. So don't forget to hop over to the website now and download that workbook and practice that activity. The thing is with Excel and with DAX, if you don't use it, you will lose it. Now, another quick point, that particular activity is a learn and earn activity. So if you want, you can leave a comment on the original blog post. And if you leave a comment on the original blog post answering the questions that are laid out in the blog, then you can earn yourself some rewards. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will share it with your friends and your colleagues and across your social platforms. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more videos again. My name is Paula and I will thank you for watching me. Goodbye now.